Hi, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're going to talk about removing moisture with a central AC or heat pump. We're going to discuss system design, commissioning, maintenance, and corrective actions as it pertains to removing moisture with a central AC system. Without further ado, here's the training. So, when we talk about design of an air conditioner or heat pump, the number one thing is doing the load calculation correctly. This seems obvious, but one of the toughest things to do because let's be honest, most contractors out there are not doing their own manual J load calculations, if at all. When you're sizing the system, there's so much oversizing already built into the software. And believe it or not, that's up to 20% larger than what your original calculations are if you do an aggressive load calculation. So if you didn't size it right, of course it's not gonna be able to remove the humidity. If it's oversized, it's gonna short cycle, and most homeowners will continue to turn that thermostat down, down, down to get the system to run longer, to feel more comfortable, because we feel relative humidity. So of course, that's the first piece of the design pie. The next piece is selecting the right size piece of equipment. And if you're not removing moisture, this is probably because you may have sized it correctly based on the total capacity need of the air conditioner, or heat pump, but didn't look and break down the latent capacity needs. It is a cardinal sin in our industry to install a system that doesn't meet the latent needs of the house because under design conditions or higher, you're not gonna be able to remove the moisture, which means you're not gonna be able to change the temperature. We're not gonna feel comfortable if we can't remove that moisture. Then of course, the third piece of the pie is duct design. Now, most people design duct work, let's say somewhat correctly, they distribute the air where it needs to go. But the number one thing I see people miss is return air when it comes to central air conditioning. You see, if you can't get the air back to the coil, there's no way for that moisture to get removed. That's the only way we can pull moisture out of the air, by running across a very cold coil. It has to actually be, be below the dew point of the air, which when it's really high relative humidity in the house, that's pretty simple. But if it doesn't come back across the coil, we can't remove the moisture. We only change the sensible temperature by delivering the air to the space. We remove the temperature and we actually remove the moisture by bringing it back to the coil. So personal recommendation, if you're putting a supply register in that room, you should have a return register in that room. One of the biggest reasons I see for a system not removing moisture is central hallway returns particularly with retrofit systems and variable speed units. If you pull a negative into that hallway with a standard 100% capacity single stage piece of equipment, then it's really easy to get that air back underneath that, let's say undercut door or something. But if you put a variable speed system in and the system ramps down because we're getting close to set point, we can't pull the air back from those bedrooms and it starts to feel more and more moist in those rooms. And you're gonna feel it when you walk between them when you open that door. All right, so we covered the basic pieces of design. Let's suppose you actually designed the system great, but it wasn't commissioned right. Meaning when you set the system up, it has to match your design, right? In order to remove the moisture, to deliver the air to where it needs to go, right? So the first thing I would say when it comes to commissioning is making sure that the thermostat is set for what the design was. If you turn the thermostat way down, of course there's gonna be more relative humidity in the space. And I'm not gonna to get too far into psychrometrics. There was a webinar done on this um, maybe a year or two ago, and you can go back through the history and watch it if you're not familiar with the properties of air. But what I want you to understand is we design for 75 degree dry bulb and 50% relative humidity in cooling. If we continue to turn the temperature down, then it's really hard to continue to remove moisture at the same rate. So the relative humidity in your space will actually go up and we'll start to feel more uncomfortable. We'll feel cold and clammy when we walk into that building when it's very cold and high humidity. Now this can happen from oversized systems, but what I find a lot of times is as a correctly sized system or slightly oversized because of the rounding that's built into manual J and they keep turning the temperature down to like 70 or 68 because they think it needs to be a meat locker in their house. Or we didn't have that conversation and set the expectation with the homeowner. Also, if you have a lot of on off time, let's say you turn your air conditioner off when you go to work and you come back and turn it on, particularly with variable speed systems, the system will try to cool the space really quickly without having enough runtime to remove the moisture. 
You are much better keeping a variable speed system within three degrees of set point when you leave or when you go to sleep than it is to turn it back or turn it way down or off. Keep in mind that also goes on the heating side too. Recovery time and how hard that system needs to work to recover from five, eight, 10 degree difference is gonna really drive your electrical usage and your comfort. Systems like a variable speed heat pump work way better when you maintain temperature or within three degrees of temperature of your normal design set point. The next piece I would say on commissioning is not setting the airflow correctly. <laughs> I know, right? This is very elementary, but if you don't set the airflow right, you can't get the refrigerant charge right. So the airflow has to match your design because that's how you deliver the air and get the air back to the system and how it was designed to do it. If you have a much higher fan speed, the air is gonna move too quickly across that coil and you're gonna end up not removing the moisture. And I see this a lot of times on variable speed systems where people will turn the fan speed switch to on and it'll run at max speed, whatever that setting was. And a lot of times, keep in mind, you have even variable speed systems or ECM motors that range from one and a half to three tons. So if you don't go in and set that maximum on that control board to a normal speed for that two ton system, take a guess out of the factory what it's running at. And that's right, three tons of air. No wonders we can't remove the moisture when that switch is on. So keep that fan speed on auto Make sure it matches the refrigerant flow, which is matching the demand that's needed for that space at this time. All right, so let's say your set point's right, your fan speed's set correctly. Let's make sure we take all the air from the space in the return and deliver it to the space in the supply. I'm talking about duct testing and sealing the ductwork. If we have a lot of leaks up in the ductwork and we don't fix it with a new system, no wonders it taxes that system way more than what we planned on when we said we were gonna have a tight duct system, right? It was gonna meet code when we did that manual J load calc. If we didn't accommodate that, that could be as much as a half a ton to a ton larger for ductwork that's located in a ventilated attic. Also, we have to make sure that the system is balanced, making sure we're delivering the air to the space the, in the volume that's needed for that room. If we can't get the air to the space and we're pulling too much air back, it could depressurize the space. And if you have a leaky building, it's gonna pull moisture in from outside or your basement or wherever that ductwork's located. Now, we made sure the system was designed right. We made sure we had the right set point. We sealed and insulated the ductwork perfectly. We need to make sure we adjust the refrigerant charge after that. So that's the last piece of that system commissioning. Once we have the airflow right, we're adjusting the charge based on the airflow. If we change the airflow again, we have to adjust the charge again, all right? Perfect example here is if you have really high airflow, you're gonna find that you have really high superheat and a lot of people will start to overcharge the system to accommodate for the over volume of air. If you turn that airflow down, yeah, you have too much volume of refrigerant in there and the compressor is going to work really hard and have really high subcooling. it's going to be hard to reject the heat outside. It's a vicious cycle and you have to make sure you set the airflow right then adjust the refrigerant charge. So that's the commissioning side of it. Let's talk about maintenance. Let's say you go out there on a system that is not newly installed and it's not removing moisture. Well let's assume first that the airflow is right then we would check the refrigerant charge, right? In order to make sure the airflow is right though, if this maintenance hasn't been done, we need to replace the air filter, make sure that the there's no restrictions like balancing dampers closed or dampers closed in spaces in order to try to force air to other rooms that weren't comfortable. Make sure that the blower wheel is actually clean and free of debris and we're running at the right fan speed, right? So sometimes uh, those settings weren't done. So the airflow is right, then we check for refrigerant leaks because if the refrigerant charge is low after we verify airflow, then we're not gonna be able to remove the, remove the moisture because that coil is gonna be warmer. We can't deliver the volume of refrigerant to the coil that's needed to get it below the dew point of the air consistently, okay? So airflow first, make sure all the maintenance around airflow is right, then check refrigerant charge. So that's the maintenance side of it. We get through all of that, we should have a system that's removing moisture, okay? Uh, of course, we can't skip right to that as a service technician. We have to make sure all of the other pieces are in line when it comes to system design, commissioning, and maintenance, right? 
So you can't just go out there and put, ref, put a set of refrigerant gauges on and top it off like the homeowner wants, right? All right, so when I'm out there and I'm looking to see if there is another issue outside of just putting my gauges on there, what's the corrective actions we normally take? So me personally, I would measure airflow first. Always measure airflow to make sure it's right. And then when I'm measuring airflow, I also measure the delta T across the A coil because this is going to provide a point of reference in time when the system wasn't working correctly. Okay. Then after I know I measured the airflow and I know the delta T across the coil, I'll measure the refrigerant charge. Supposing it's right, I assume I'm probably going to find a charge issue or a valve problem or an orifice issue, something around the refrigerant cycle in that instance. Once I adjust the refrigerant charge, and remember, this can be done by superheat and subcooling. It could be approached with Linux systems. Of course, it's all by weight when you talk about variable speed heat pumps typically. Then after I get the refrigerant charge correct, I'm going to measure the delta T across that coil again with the same volume of air. I need to make sure nothing else changed. What I'm looking for is a much larger delta T because that means the coil is colder. When the coil's colder, I can remove more moisture. If that's not the case, and we're still not removing the moisture, I need to start back way at the beginning and verify the load calculation, equipment selection, the duct work, the airflow measurements, all of those other pieces to make sure that I didn't skip anything in that step. And what you're gonna find it's probably going to be way back in the beginning on system design. Now, we can't easily, as a technician, fix a system that's already been installed for years if it wasn't designed correctly. So you have to present the options. Sometimes it's ductwork upgrades, more return air. Uh, sometimes the easiest way to fix this problem and the lowest cost option is integrating a dehumidifier into that system to accommodate for that excess latent capacity we can't remove. Of course, this is not a fun conversation if you just installed the air conditioner, right? It's gonna be a much larger additional cost. You can install these in parallel with the ductwork, which obviously when a dehumidifier is running up in an attic, could be a little noisy if it's near a bedroom, let's say. If it's in a basement, it's a much easier installation when it comes to working with the duct system and noise. Uh, just keep in mind, you will not wanna size that dehumidifier for 80% of the latent capacity needs of the house. So you still, even if you haven't done a load calculation yet, are gonna have to go back and do one in order to verify that. All Thank right, you. what'd you think about the training on removing moisture with a central system? This was actually a recording from one year ago for my Patreon members. If you like this sort of stuff, you can head over to my Patreon page where you can get access to the last Oh geez, three years worth of training now for just $8 a month. I want to thank everybody for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.